Air travel remains safe, no thanks to the multi-layered maintenance chain. Out of the maintenance schedule comes aircraft that are airworthy. In aviation, airworthiness is the measure of an aircraft's suitability for safe flight. The pilot in command could discontinue the flight when unworthy, mechanical, electrical or structural conditions occur which compromise the airworthiness of his craft. On the program, airworthiness once more receives attention. Plus, Ibom Air orders 10 new Airbus aircraft at the Dubai Air Show. Welcome to Vision This Week on Channels Television. I'm Bukola Ju Uketumbi, and our background report is next. Aviation provides the only rapid worldwide transportation network, which makes it essential for global business. It also generates economic growth, creates jobs and facilitates international trade and tourism. In the aviation mix, sustaining a viable airline industry is important, and this cannot exist without airworthy aircraft, and what is also described as continuing airworthiness of this craft. For passengers who travel every day, this is their description of aircraft safety. The flight coming back to base is for their safety. Uh, when a pilot attempts some maneuvers and finds out that he cannot continue be before he returns back to base, it's a very hard decision to make. But basically, if he has seen that to the, to the best of the interest of the passengers and the safety of his flight, he will return you back to base. He's not doing that because he doesn't know what to do, but he doesn't want to risk it. He will not prefer doing it 50-50. This carrier movement is when you, during rainy season, when you are in higher altitude, you lose altitude. Definitely everybody screams and calling Jesus and Allah. So naturally you feel it. <laughs> That's my scariest movement during rainy season when you enter turbulence. Away from passengers to a hangar facility in Lagos, where the top bus here takes us through a D-check currently going on on a helicopter as part of a maintenance schedule. This is an Augusta 139 helicopter, an eight years inspection. It's the highest level of maintenance that can ever take place on this aircraft as approved by the manufacturer of this aircraft and the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, NCAA. It's a 12-seater with crew 14-seater helicopter, one of the best and the fastest here, stripping off of the engines, removing the engine, the gearbox, the entire cockpit, the instruments, the entire flight controls. So what exactly is airworthiness and continued airworthiness? Airworthiness is the heartbeat of aviation. If an aircraft is not airworthy, you can't fly it. You can't even start the engine. So... But one thing we must get is that the continuing airworthiness of any aircraft is the responsibility of the operator. This is key for us to understand. Because the operator has the responsibility to ensure that the aircraft is airworthy. If there's any, God forbid, any plane crash or any incident, the person that the customers talk to is the operator, not the civil aviation. So if I rigged a particular aircraft engine, I'm licensed, 20, 30 years experience, fine. But somebody else must come and check if what I did is correct and countersign and put his or her license number there and full name. So what I, did to, what, what I do today on any aircraft as an aircraft engineer, five, ten years later, if that aircraft has issues, it can be traced to me because there's a record. The airworthiness of an aircraft is concerned with the standards of safety incorporated in all aspects of its construction. The big birds usually go through checks across all components. Engines are driven, some aspects of the engines are on and they are on hard time. That means you cannot run them beyond their approved life. If the manufacturer says this engine should run for 3,000 cycles, you, that means 3,000 landings, 3,000 flights. You can't do 3,001. So that, there is that other aspect. But there is this other aspect that says if an engine is on ground, you must run it every 10 days to make sure that the engine is still in good shape. So in the first scenario, when you say 3,000 landings, and therefore you can't run the engine beyond 3,000 landings, that is hard time. 
the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority's functions and oversight of all the airworthiness includes air transport operators and approved maintenance organizations. No aircraft can operate without a certificate of airworthiness, and this is issued for an aircraft by the National Aviation Authority in the state in which the aircraft is registered. This certificate attests that the aircraft is airworthy insofar as the aircraft conforms to its type design. On our interview segment, the Director General of the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority speaks to the issue of airworthiness and what is expected of all parties in the safety chain. There's more from here. It's unusual. Human beings can fly. So flying its own is an extraordinary experience. And people, it's normal for people to be scared in flights. It, it's, it's, it's normal, you know. There's nothing uh, extraordinary there, I understand. But what I want the traveling public to understand, the NCA is ensuring continuous airworthiness of all the aircrafts that fly in Nigeria. We do check them. When do we ensure they go through the due maintenance, and when they do, they bring the records, we cross-check and cross-check and confirm before we sign the airworthiness uh, certificates. That's what we do through our surveillance, through our oversight. Uh, when these uh, aircrafts come from uh, maintenance, we go through the maintenance checklist and the maintenance records and ensure whatever is due is included in the maintenance. And when that is done, we cross-check them. And we do ram checks, we do spot checks, we check the aircraft uh, systems, we do a lot of things. And that's, the way, what, that's what we call our surveillance. It could be an audit, it could be a spot check, it could be an organized uh, visit, it could be a surprise audit. So we do all that to ensure that the, the airlines comply with all the airworthiness matters. Uh, they, uh, they, they are supposed to do. An indication does not necessarily mean the door is not locked. I've had indications like that before. It could be the sensor. It's, that's a problem with the sensor of the door. It could just be an indication problem. And if the door is not locked properly, the, uh, the cabin uh, pressure will leak. You'll hear noise. A lot of things will happen. The cabin will leak. So it's more than likely it might just be an uh, indication problem. Understand aircrafts are mechanic, are mechanical, they're electrical, there are many systems that could have issues. And indication problems with some of the sensors are very, very peculiar. A little moisture or dust in it can lead to a wrong indication. I'm not saying we've not had incidents, but if the aircraft, the door indicated it was not locked and the aircraft came back and landed safely without any further incident, then uh, the door was locked. It's more than likely it's an indication. Believe me, if the door opens in flight, it's going to be a disaster. Exactly. People will probably be sucked out of the plane. So, and doors, the mechanism of closing the doors is you have secondary, you have primary, you have secondary, you have all sorts of things. You know, the air pressure seals it. There are bayonets that go into the up and on the sides. It's, it's pretty, uh, pretty very strong. It will take significant and disastrous failure for a door to fail in flight, except, of course, if you don't operate it properly from, from the ground. So if you don't even lock it on the ground before you even depart, it's going to tell the captain there's going to be a door indication, like some cars, if it does not properly lock, it will ding, 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 and it will show you the light, you know. And some cars actually show you which door is not locked. So it's the same in the, in the uh, aircraft. Well, I'll tell you, as 40 years experience as a pilot, whenever you have a warning, the best thing is to get the aircraft done and show it's just confirm it's just a faulty warning, not an actual thing. You, you don't want to start playing with the lives of people in flight. When you have anything, get the plane down. As soon as practical, check and see what is the cause of that indication. It could be that it's an ongoing failure you don't know. So you need to confirm. Why should I continue if I depart Abuja, I'm 20 minutes to Abuja, why do I want to continue 30, 40 minutes to Lagos and risk the life of people? It's better for me to come back to Abuja, 
land, have my folks, engineering folks check and ensure it's not a major problem or if there's a problem, they fix it. You don't want to risk life. Of, there's absolutely nothing wrong with an air return. Air return is a precautionary measure to ensure that the aircraft is fit to fly. So when you get a warning or an indication that's abnormal, you want to ensure it's just what it is. You want to ensure the system is okay. Nigeria's Ibom Air has placed an order for 10 Airbus A220S. The order is broken down between the types, with the A220-300 being delivered from 2023, while the A220-100 to follow. The order of the 10 aircrafts is in line with the aggressive growth plan of the airline, which will see it expanding its footprint into new domestic routes as well as regional routes covering West and Central Africa in the immediate future. A possible resumption of flights between Nigeria and the United Arab Emirates may be imminent as Nigeria concludes discussions with the Middle Eastern country. This is coming from the National Incident Manager, Mukhtar Mohammed, at the PSC briefing in Abuja. He notes that all parties have agreed on the reviewed guidelines and are to adhere to the conditions imposed by the UAE. You will recall that in the past, these conditions were not agreed because we did not believe they were scientifically uh, appropriate. But in the best interest of harmony, we have agreed now to carry on with these conditions. It will be a little hardship for our passengers, but we assure you that we will do everything possible to protect the interest of our country and also ensure that Nigerians do not go through unnecessary hardship. Global aerospace firms sought at the Dubai Air Show to build on signs of a tentative recovery from a global pandemic which has shattered the industry's profits while taking up efforts to address concerns over climate change. After major orders for narrow body jets and a new freighter, Airbus was seeking a contract for up to 30 A320neo narrow body jets from Kuwait's Jazeera Airways. But the deal was subject to tough last-minute negotiations. It's, it's work in progress. We're moving on it. Uh, I think we'll probably watch very carefully how the process of certification goes over the next couple of years. Um, and then um, we'll firm up what the delivery positions will be. Both airlines and some of their suppliers are seen as keen to showcase signs of an industry recovery using the deadline of air show publicity to try to win last minute concessions. But the pace of orders was slower than in previous editions of the Middle East event and mainly restricted to narrow body jets that are in highest demand from low cost carriers, while demand for wide body jets underpinning Gulf carriers was scarce. Talks between Airbus and Kuwait's Jazeera come after the airline's chairman, Marwan Bodai, said the budget carrier was aiming to buy jets worth up to $2 billion. Singapore Airlines Limited is expected to resume Boeing 737 MAX flights before the end of the year. The city-state's aviation regulator approved 737 MAX flights in September, more than two years after they were grounded, following two deadly crashes. But Singapore Airlines has not returned them to service yet because it needs the green light from other countries to fly the 737 MAX in their airspace and land the plane. We are launching our new seat products on our narrow-body aircraft, the 737-8. We believe these to be best-in-class globally and unmatched regionally. So we are very excited to show this to the public. More countries reopen after lifting COVID-19 restrictions. That's after the break. To join us again.
Cuba has reopened its borders to international tourism and eased entry requirements after almost two years of coronavirus pandemic that has wreaked havoc on the Caribbean island's economy. The reopening is good because it's a way for tourism and the country's economy to grow and to obtain dividends to improve the situation in the country. Travelers over 12 will only have to carry proof of vaccination or a recent PCR to enter the country, replacing perhaps the strictest protocols in the Caribbean. At this airport, we receive approximately 51 flights per week. Today, we are starting a group of essential operations. Terminal 2 was closed, and today it restarts operations with the arrival of nine flights. This week, we are expecting to receive 170 flights in the two terminals of this airport. That protocol, along with the U.S. ban on most travel to the communist-run island nation next door, has left tourism well behind competitors in the area, such as the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, the Bahamas and Cancun. The pandemic left schools, entertainment venues closed, reducing to near zero the all-important tourism industry, local travel abroad and visits by the diaspora, contributing to a brutal economic crisis that has left residents short on food, medicine and other basic goods. Cuba received over 4 million tourists in 2019, contributing 10.6% to the GDP and much more through supply chains and informal economic activity. This year, just 200,000 guests have arrived and another 100,000 are expected. Still on border reopening, this time in the Philippines, as this aviation school is hopeful of a surge in enrollments as demand for air travel resumes. With planes put in storage and airports literally closed, Alpha Aviation Group, a pilot training school which has hubs in the UK and the Middle East, also face challenges. At their largest training hub in Southeast Asia, which lies in Pampanga province of the central Philippines, over 100 students have enrolled this year. In previous years, they had more than 300. The student numbers are still low, but the school says it expects more cadets to sign up in coming months as the outlook on travel resumptions become clearer. The school is preparing to add more training facilities over the next two years to accommodate this expected demand. Since 2020, thousands of commercial pilots have either retired, been laid off or sought other career opportunities as the pandemic grounded planes. I would say it's really devastating, no? the pandemic. Uh, it ended a lot of... Uh, it ended a lot of uh, uh, careers initially uh, for for the regular pilots and also of course it, I'm sure I, I would share the shattered dreams of those uh, cadets who are looking forward for a for a progressive career in aviation. Despite the uncertainties, 22-year-old Kase Abdila is determined to finish the course and get her license. With the pandemic, I think everyone, parang, there's this wake-up call na everything is uncertain. To me, there isn't really a perfect timing to do everything. Sometimes you just have to take a leap of faith with the right amount of courage, hard work, and hope for the best. We are now putting together a mentorship program composed of senior simulator flight instructors who will be coaching and mentoring these uh, cadet pilots, giving them you know, an idea of what's happening globally, what's happening in the industry, the switch paths now, uh, when is the industry going to recover, what, what can you expect out of an industry in recovery. So right now, uh, we always say the best time to train is now because uh, experts will definitely tell you that there's no other way for the industry but to rebound. This is uh, one of our two The school's Airbus full motion Airbus flight yeah, simulators uh, are running all day CD now, getting the trainee pilots ready for real world scenarios. First year student, Mikel Francisco, just hopes that he can get a job in the industry. A two year pilot course costs around $80,000. Tuition prices haven't fallen during the pandemic.
The International Air Transport Association expects net airline industry losses of $47.7 billion in 2021. This is an improvement on the estimated net industry loss of $126.4 billion in 2020. IATA adds that industry losses of this scale imply a cash burn of $81 billion in 2021, but sees a relief with government financial measures and capital markets having been filling this hole in airline balance sheets, preventing widespread bankruptcies. Many countries and airlines appear to be getting out of the woods gradually. In Nigeria, domestic travel appears to be scaling up except for the paucity of aircraft occasioned by the pandemic. Beyond this, new airline startups are foreign heavily into the domestic market. A few months ago, United Nigeria, a local carrier with Enugu Airport base, made its entry. Green Africa Airways, NG Eagle, Rano Air, Northeast Shuttle are some of those gearing up to fly as they process their papers with the regulator. Though a cheering development for the beleaguered industry, stakeholders have warmed up to the news with surprise and cautious optimism. For the country's air regulator, Nigeria is a huge market and the demand is growing and it's a virgin market that becomes larger. Passengers in the industry also see the incoming additions as an opportunity for price slashes and healthy competition. Having more airline is part of the solution. Uh, for instance, this trip I'm, I'm cashing now took me more than one hour searching. They say fully booked, fully booked, fully booked. So I have to do like somebody fishing and then see that oh, so, something has dropped. The price is crazy. The, the, the stress it puts on you is so much. But when we have more, and the efficiency is actually there, then we will enjoy it. Oh, I think it's a good thing. Um, it creates a healthy competition. The more airlines we have, the more carriers we have, the more options the travelers are going to have. It uh, helps neutralize the possibility of monopoly from the main carriers, such as uh, Arik, uh, was it Dana Air, and the other airline there, Airpeace. So I think it's uh, always a good thing in a in the society to have a healthy competition. So by all means, we should have them come. And baggage handling and, um, and delays. So those are things, if they want to rise above their peers, they should uh, focus on those areas, especially delay. Uh, if, if the flight's supposed to leave at 2 p.m., by all means, leave at least within 2 p.m. Some others add that federal government should invest more in the sector. I think time, Right. I think every Nigerian can relate to the fact that our airlines are very terrible at keeping to time, right? Delayed flights, cancelled flights, without, you know, good compensation. I don't think that's professional enough. Um, also, what again, maybe customer service, yeah, can also be worked on. Um, yeah, and then the maintenance of the flights as well. The checking process is still like you are going to war. It shouldn't happen like that. The federal government needs to improve even the road network leading to the airport. People miss their flight not because they didn't wake up early. You can stay in the traffic and miss your flight. It doesn't matter what time you left your house. So um, in terms of infrastructure and the terminal building itself, we haven't started. Industry investors believe it's a lot of courage to float airlines at a time of global downturn. Traveler apathy and heavy reliance on government bailout to save existing airlines from collapse. Some optimists foresee survival and win win where the new and old carriers are open to good business plans, merger, and better cooperation to evolve stronger airlines that can compete on the international front. This is our final destination on the program. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Bukola Ju Okitsumbi.